Hey now, it's time for another episode of Wrestling's Greatest Moments. Hulk Hogan is known for many things, and one of them is his incredible ability to tell tall tales. Let's look at some of the Hulkster's biggest tall tales. Is there anything Hulk Hogan can't do? The man body slammed Andre the Giant. Co-hosted Saturday Night Live with Mr. T. Helped bring wrestling back to primetime television and reinvented himself in the 90s, adding years to his career. In spite of his many accomplishments, the Hulkster isn't satisfied with his actual accomplishments and insists on telling some tall tales. Let's look at 10 vintage Hogan fibs, and don't worry, we've got more where these came from. Number 1. He Hulked Up from the Time-Spaced Continuum Breaking the laws of physics is child's play for Hulk Hogan. While it's unknown if he has any scientific training, he apparently found a way to wrestle 400 days in one year which normally contains 365 days. How on earth, or in the universe for that matter, could Hulk do so? Did he call on his main man above to grant him a miracle? Was Stephen Hawking a Hulkamaniac and he clued him in? Let's hear what Hulk had to say. According to the Hulkster, he traveled so often between the US and Japan that the time zone difference allowed him to fit 400 days into a typical 365 day year. Incredible. All we can ask is why Hogan doesn't have a Nobel Prize for this. Number 2. He was asked to play for Metallica Hulk Hogan is a man of many talents. Not only can he fight for the rights of every man, he can play a bass guitar with the best of them. In fact, that's how Hogan was discovered. He was playing in a band at a club attended by wrestlers when they noticed he had the build for brawling. However, his talent for playing bass almost led him to playing for the band Metallica. At least that's Hogan's recollection, as chronicled by the website Loudwire. I used to be a session musician before I was a wrestler. I played bass guitar. I was big pals with Lars Ulrich, and he asked me if I wanted to play bass with Metallica in their early days. But it didn't work out. According to the site Loudwire, Hogan told the Chicago Tribune about his Metallica connection during his book tour for his second memoir, My Life Outside the Ring. When Metallica was looking for a bass player, I called and never heard a word back from them. I would have quit wrestling in a heartbeat to be a bass player for Metallica. However, Lars Ulrich doesn't remember anything about a conversation, or Hulk Hogan for that matter. During an appearance on the Howard Stern Show, Ulrich was asked about Hogan's account of things, replying, You know what? I'm blessed or cursed depending on how you look at it, with having more or less a photographic memory for pretty much anything that I've been a part of. That one, when that showed up two or three months ago, I was scratching my head over that one. I don't know Hulk Hogan. I don't know enough about him. I'm not a huge wrestling fan. Unless he went by, like, his Christian name or something. And I don't know if he, anybody knows what his Christian name was. Dave Smith or something? If there was a whole thing that we had with him under a different name. But I certainly have no recollection of doing anything with, quote, Hulk Hogan, end quote. That one, I was scratching my head on that one too. In 2013, the Hulkster appeared on the Krang podcast and discussed the rumors again. Here's an excerpt from Hogan's impassioned defense of his story. That rumor has been turned and twisted and thrown in so many different directions. That I auditioned, and that I lied, and that I never auditioned, and they weren't interested. The truth is, I played music for many years before I ever got into wrestling. And when I heard Metallica was looking for a bass player, I would have quit wrestling like that, snaps his fingers, to get into Metallica. Hogan said he put together a collection of some of his old tapes, including ones produced by Simon Cowell. However, I got all that stuff together to send it to Metallica and never heard a word. So he never responded to me. They either thought I was a joke, or they thought I was a joke, and it wasn't me, or I was no good. But I never heard back from them. I tried. But I never did audition for Metallica. I wish I would have, but the bass player they got was so good. My god. In hindsight, the wrestling world didn't lose Hogan, and Metallica went on to even greater heights. Number 3. Elvis Watch Hogan Wrestle Yes, Hogan wrestled in front of the King. Just like every wrestler from his era, Hulk Hogan worked in many promotions before he struck gold with his act. One of the promotions he worked for was in Memphis, Tennessee, the home of the King of Rock and Roll, Elvis Presley, as well as the King of Wrestling, Jerry Lawler. Hogan has talked about Elvis Presley watching him when he wrestled early on in his career. 
It's well known that Elvis was a wrestling fan. In fact, wrestling legend has it that Jerry Lawler wanted to work a program against Presley. In Hogan's case, he did work in Memphis, and he did wrestle for the King. Jerry the King Lawler. As for Presley, that was a bit more difficult. The problem was that Elvis was already dead when Hogan wrestled in Memphis, unless you're on that list of people who believe Elvis faked his death, in which case maybe he did pop up to watch the Hulkster. Number 4. He Defeated Pride Fighters While it's difficult to pin down the exact dates when mixed martial arts became established as a sport, Hulk Hogan will tell you he's, he was involved with its earliest days. If the Hulkster is to be believed, and at this point you'd have to be a fool to doubt anything he says is less than gospel, he occasionally found himself scrapping with fighters from the MMA group Pride. Whether it was his size, his strength, or the innate goodness of Hulkamania, Pride's fighters failed to overcome him. Not surprisingly, the Hulkster's formidable fighting skills would deliver him from evil and our next feat of Hogan heroics. Number 5. He Shot on Tatsumi Fujinami Japanese wrestler Tatsumi Fujinami is a legend, but even he is a mere mortal compared to the power of Hulk Hogan. Nonetheless, that didn't stop the big man from trying to stop the Hulkster during a match in Japan. According to Hogan, Fujinami tried to shoot on him in an attempt to steal the WWF Championship. Thankfully, Fujinami wasn't dealing with some flash in the pan like Lou Thez or Harley Race, and Hogan claims he did things the old-fashioned way, making sure Tatsumi did things the Hulk Hogan way. Number 6. He was supposed to star in The Wrestler. With acting credits that include No Holds Barred, Santa with Muscles, Suburban Commando, and Mr. Nanny, not to mention TV shows such as Thunder in Paradise and guest shots on TV shows such as Love Boat, Walker, Texas Ranger, and The A-Team, what A-list Hollywood director would pass on the chance to have Hulk Hogan grace their film with his notable acting chops? When the wrestler was in pre-production, Hogan was offered the title role but declined, feeling that not even his acting skills were enough for the role. This pure humility typifies the Hulk Hogan fans and wrestlers have come to know. One can only imagine Hulk being asked to star in the film and humbly passing, saying, That doesn't work for me, brother. Number 7. He Outdrank John Belushi WrestleMania 2 was one of the WWF's oddest WrestleMania. Not only was it held on a Monday night, the only mania to do so, but it was split up amongst three different locations. Hulk Hogan defended his WWF Championship in a steel cage match against King Kong Bundy, defeating the walking condominium despite having injured ribs. The Hulkster dazzled the fans in Los Angeles and at home watching the show. As you might imagine, there were plenty of stars out and about, and perhaps it was inevitable that the Hulkster would party with some of them. Hulk Hogan claims that he partied with none other than actor and comedian John Belushi. John Belushi was known for his hard partying ways, but once again, a Hogan celebrity discovered there's drunk and then there's Hogan drunk. While Belushi's death years before might cast doubt on Hogan's story, who are we to doubt the main man? Number 8. The Undertaker Injured His Neck Heavy is the head that wears the crown, something Hulk Hogan dealt with throughout his illustrious career. However, in 1991, he suffered a devastating neck injury when The Undertaker piledrived him onto a steel chair. It was the 1991 Survivor Series, and The Undertaker was wrestling Hulk Hogan for the WWF Championship, just a year after Taker's WWF debut. During an interview with ESPN, Taker recalled what happened when he performed the move. I pick him up, and when I tell you I had the brother secure, he was secure. Boom, I give him the tombstone, as soon as my knees hit, I hear, Oh, you got me, brother. According to the interview, Undertaker thought he had killed Hogan. Future Hall of Famer saw Hogan lying on his back on the floor of Vince McMahon's office. However, other wrestlers weren't so sure about Hogan's injury and told the concerned wrestler that Hogan's neck never hit the mat or the chair. The Undertaker eventually looked into things and discovered the same. While The Undertaker had quickly become a top star, he was still low on the food chain next to Hulk Hogan. Thus, The Undertaker was careful when he approached Hogan about what seemed like one of the Hulkster's finest acting performances. He's like, well, brother, what it was, you had me so tight that when we came down, I had nowhere to move, and that's what jammed my neck because I couldn't move at all. It was too tight. The Hulkster's medical explanation was less than convincing, 
leading to Taker realizing that while he respected Hulk Hogan for his contributions to the wrestling world, I knew all I needed to know about him. Then my radar was always up anytime I had to interact with him. Interestingly, Hogan would discuss the bump in his memoir, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. He also screwed up my neck something fierce. It wasn't his fault. He took care of me and made sure my head didn't hit the mat. But the jolts of my neck being stretched like that sent me right to the hospital. According to Doc Hogan, it would be years before I got all the feeling back in my arm. Did Doc Hogan misdiagnose himself? Was he trying to bury, no pun intended, The Undertaker before he threatened Hulk Hogan's popularity? While the hoaxer has been the victim of duplicity, such as an imposter referee, this video seems conclusive proof that the hoaxer's boo-boo was bogus. The George Foreman Grill was offered to him. Hulk Hogan has had a lot of merchandise throughout the years, but have you heard about the one that got away? Apparently the makers of the home grill that eventually became known as the George Foreman Grill wanted the Hulkster to show for them. The only problem was that Hulkster wasn't home when the phone rang, which led to him missing out on millions. That's just one of Hogan's recollections of what happened. Let's look at the two tales of how Hogan lost out on hundreds of millions of dollars. One tale has it that Hogan passed on the grill. In 2022, Talk Sports' Jake Bacon reported that Hogan once claimed his agent asked him if he should endorse some sort of kitchen appliance. The hoaxer was given the choice between endorsing a meatball maker and a grill. Hogan claims to have opted for the meatball maker. The second account has Hogan missing a phone call, a very expensive phone call at that. During an episode of his reality show, Hogan Knows Best, he recalled the tragedy that cost him a fortune. No, not his divorce, that would occur later. Then I got home and pressed the old school voicemail recorder machine and it says, Hey Hulk, this is Sam Perlmutter. I've got a grill and I've got a blender and I'm calling to call you and George Foreman to see who wants it. I wasn't there to answer the call. So when I called Sam back, he said, George took the grill. So basically, $550 million later, George got the lean, mean grilling machine and I got a blender that when you put AA batteries in it, would fart and then turn off. While some critics might say the blender resembled Hogan's matches in the 21st century, that's neither here nor there. Like many of the tall tales, it's hard to pin down what happened. George Foreman himself was once asked what happened with Hogan and the grill, and the boxing great tweeted, The real story is, Hulk Hogan is about the best friend I ever had. He could do a Hogan whatever, it'd fly, cause I'd buy. It's believed that the George Foreman grill made Mr. Foreman over $200 million. During an interview with AARP, Foreman was asked about whether this figure was true, with George replying, much more. There were months I was being paid $8 million per month. In a classic case of too little too late, the Hulkster decided to introduce his own grill, the Hulk Hogan Ultimate Grill. The product debuted in 2007, but it didn't have time to catch on. Instead, it caught on fire, at least according to a 2008 Consumer Product and Safety Commission recall, which stated, cooking oils or sprays applied to the grill's cooking plates before preheating can cause the oil to ignite and or flare up. Cooking sprays can ignite and or flare up if used on the grill at any time. And what you're gonna do when the Hulk Hogan grill engulfs you and it burns ever so quickly. Number 10. His WrestleMania 3 Tall Tales Part 1 Hulk Hogan's legendary match against Andre the Giant at WrestleMania 3 accomplished much, but somehow the Hulkster has always felt the need to embellish it. One story involves just how much Andre the Giant weighed during the match, 650 pounds. The other, the March 29, 2005 episode of MTV Cribs. Hogan invited viewers into his massive vanity closet, picked up a pair of shiny yellow wrestling boots, telling everyone, These boots right here are the most famous boots of all time. I wrestled Andre the Giant with these boots on, and then a couple of days later, he passed on. These are my favorite pair of boots. Somehow it slips the Hulkster's mind that Andre didn't pass away until 1993, nearly six years after the massive main event at the Pontiac Silverdome. It wasn't as if Hogan ever wrestled Andre again, other than at 1987 Survivor Series, 1988's main event, WrestleMania 4, SummerSlam, 
Oh, forget it. Wrestling is built on deceiving the audience. However, in the case of Hulk Hogan, there's kayfabe, and then there's Hulk Hogan. What do you think of Hogan's Tall Tales? Share your thoughts in the comments section, and let us know if there's any videos you'd like wrestling's greatest moments to cover. In the meantime, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and spread the good news about wrestling's greatest moments. The channel that celebrates a squared circle.